In introduction video on Turbo Prep, we gave you an overview of all the menu items and the general process of loading data into Turbo Prep. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to do pivoting. A pivot table is usually used to rearrange or to aggregate data. The aggregation often helps to identify structures and assess the information contained in the data table. We'll create a pivoted view of our customer data table, which we've pre-selected here in our repository. If you want to find out how that data has been imported, then please check out the Importing Data in RapidMiner Studio tutorial. Another option is to download the data and use the Import Data option in TurboPrep. Our data here contains information about some customers, their gender, their age, what payment method they prefer, when their last transaction with us was, and if they're considered to be a loyal customer, or if they've left us, have churned. At the moment, we're only interested in the customers for whom we know something about their loyalty status, because that's what we want to improve on, to get on. Therefore, the first data preparation step is to get rid of the customers with missing loyalty information. So let's transform our data based on the churn column, which holds the information on our customer's loyalty. After selecting it, we can simply filter to show only those rows which don't have a missing value. After applying the filter and committing the transformation, we're ready to create our pivot table. The loyalty of our customers is clearly one category we want to group by, and we may also want to look at the preferred payment method. Now we have the high-level structure, but no data to look at. The two numeric variables, age and last transaction, are logical candidates, as they tell us something about our customer's behavior. But we should also analyze the number of loyal or churn in each subgroup of customers. So I'll add that as well in our aggregates here. RapidMiner automatically picks up reasonable aggregation functions for you. Since the churn attribute is a categorical variable containing text, the count function is the most obvious choice. For numeric columns, average or sum is most often used to aggregate, and so average is the default here. However, there's also a variety of other aggregation methods available for numeric and categorical attributes in case you need them. To see if we can identify some patterns in our data, let's sort according to the different aggregates. If we sort by age, we can see that groups with more senior customers are more likely to churn. Looking at the last transactions in sorted order, we can see that groups with smaller spending amounts are more loyal than groups with the highest spending amounts. If we focus on the loyal or churn counts, then there's no clear picture from the group sizes reflecting on the loyalty status. But we can see that the groups using checks as means for payment is the smallest, while credit card payments are most common. We could additionally use the gender as a way to separate the data for analysis. If we now sort again according to loyalty status, we can see that the numbers differ characteristically between the genders. We can show the details for this column, here, which tells us that the two classes, male and female, are roughly equally distributed. So that cannot explain the difference in the overall numbers. So in a real-world scenario, we'd probably want to investigate this pattern further, which could then help us reduce our churn rate. If you would want to use this table for further analysis, then you only need to select Commit Pivot, and then you can either save it into your repository or export it into various formats. This concludes our brief demonstration on creating a pivot table with TurboPrep. Thank you very much for watching.